Hi and welcome to a bit of a different video. For this channel at least, don't worry, the channel is staying exactly the same. Wheel Up Time is still going to be making regular music animated videos. This is just a bit of a different project that I've been working on and it's in a really good place right now so I'm excited to share it with the world. So this is a board game called Third Age that I have been designing and I'm pretty happy with it. As you can see, we have quite a, a pretty map and a bunch of different components here. There's all sorts going on. So it is quite a heavy board game, but we've all been having a lot of fun with it. And the storylines that come up when different cards happen in different combinations and you see characters that you love and know. Anyway, let's dive into some details and I'll tell you a bit about how the game works. So, first of all, the most important thing at the start of the game is going to be to pick one of the five characters from, of course, the Emmonsfield Five. You can play as any of them, and they all have their own unique abilities, attributes, and quests to go on. So, looking at Gwyn, we can see a bunch of information on this card, uh, or this board even, along with some resources that everybody begins the game with. And they're in her supply over here. Up at the top, we have a maximum hand size limit and a base combat strength. These numbers do improve as you progress through the game on the bottom of your ability tiles. So you will get stronger and be able to hold more cards in your hand, more action cards in your hand. Then we have our attributes. Now there are five types of attributes. So you can see Egwen only has three of them, meaning she cannot play cards that require skill or cards that require military. In order to do that, she would have to have a follower in her party of those types. And that is how everyone can eventually gain access to each of the five attributes. So the attributes are, of course, Deus Damar, Channeling, Leadership, Skill, and Military. And then we have these quests at the bottom. They get unlocked depending on when certain conditions are met and give you a very unique ability that helps guide you in the right direction as you progress through the game. So you'll be unlocking these tiered abilities. You'll be moving your attributes up as you go through the Westlands. And you'll be collecting resources like coins and favor. Got some different denominations of coins here and favor and also these troop tokens which used mainly for combat now getting into a bit more of the pace of play generally on your turn what you're going to be doing is picking your character up on the board from wherever they are and moving them to the next location and it's not always the next location the first few turns are quite scripted and walk you through Basically, each of the different things that you can do in the game. Here you can see we pick up a character card in Bellon on presumably the first turn of the game. And in Whitebridge, we get a coin and a favour. Four Kings gives us an action card, which you draw into your hand, along with revealing another character. And then when you get to Camelin, you get a bit of everything, including a troop. At that point... You should have got a grasp of most of the game mechanics just over the first few turns of the game and you have some choices to make going forward about which direction you want to take your character, what you want to focus on, and how you want to progress to a place where you can actually consider fighting a Forsaken. Now, I've talked a lot about these different types of cards, so let's just go ahead and take a look at some of them. Over here, we have a tier 1 character deck, so this is what you'll be seeing a lot of in the first portion of the game. Such as when you arrive in Bellon, you'll reveal a character from this deck. And this deck has all sorts of familiar faces, Kintavir here, or Beslan. These are the weaker ones, they're the cost 1 to 4 followers, so they cost up to 4 in any combination of gold and favour. And they each have their own attributes and levels in those attributes, the same as you do on your player board. And when you recruit them, you can use them to play cards that you wouldn't otherwise have access to, as well as sometimes having an awesome ability like this one does. 
Now, you may have noticed some Trollocs a second ago as I'm just shuffling through these here. And there are also enemies in these decks. And when you encounter them, instead of having the chance to recruit them like a follower, you have to fight them. That takes your base combat strength along with troops and any cards you play. And if you beat them, you get some points. Of course, it's a board game, so everything is about earning juicy, juicy points and moving up on this score track that we have off to the edge of the board here. So that sort of explains the character decks. As you go up on the tiers by unlocking quests on your character board, you gain access to the deeper decks and they have more expensive cards in them or more powerful enemies, such as Aginor here, one of the Forsaken. Now, the game ends when three Forsaken are killed. There's a total of 15 in this deck, so there's quite a lot to come across. So, you will come across them quite a lot once you get into the tier 3 deck in the later portions of the game. And they have these little pawns, because they stay in play and stay wherever they were revealed and terrorise anybody else who comes into the area. Or, comes there specifically to kill them. Finally, we have these action decks, and just like the characters, they're separated into three tiers, which you gain access to as you upgrade your character. And these tiers are sorted into different brackets of the level you need in that attribute to play the cards. So all the one cards can be played by characters with up to four in the relevant attribute. And they give you somewhat weak effects. You know, they're reasonable, they're low power, they can be used to, to level up attributes further, such as practicing the forms, you'd gain one military. Or they could be used to get rid of cards in the tavern row, which is a selection of cards that, if not claimed when a player reveals them, they go into the tavern instead, and somebody else can pick them up. Well, this one lets you clear the tavern row and deal new cards into it. This one reduces the cost of a follower by two favour, which might mean that you can pick up uh, an, a follower that you wouldn't otherwise have been able to get, and somebody might have left there thinking you could get it because they looked at your favour. There's lots of things going on here, of course. And another nice little benefit is that if you use one of these cards with your own character, aka not a follower, then you gain a level in that attribute. So you automatically level up the more you do things and progress through the game to a point where ultimately you're able to take on these Forsaken and gain all the glorious points that they are worth. And that's basically the game. You'll be drawing a bunch of action cards, revealing characters, recruiting them, killing enemies. Progressing forward, completing quests so that you unlock new abilities and gain access to the higher level decks and then eventually taking on the Forsaken and trying to make sure that you have the most points at the end of the game when that third Forsaken is killed. Now, like I said, this isn't the usual sort of video that I post on this channel, but I didn't know where else was better to share it, so here it is. If you want to see more information about this game i have a discord server which i will put in the description all of my play testers are in there and we regularly run play tests online using tabletop simulator um, which is what you're viewing right now it's a program in steam so you do have to purchase tabletop simulator in order to be able to participate in these play test sessions but right now, it's pretty much heading to a public beta, and the more, the merrier. Please come ahead and join in, and let us know in the comments below if there's anything you were curious about that wasn't quite explained, or if you want to know more just about this game, because I'm really hoping we can push this. It's had really positive feedback from pretty much everyone who's played it um so hopefully we can we can get the right people to see this and, and make it a reality but thanks you guys i'm james platten and this has been a brief overview of third age the board game based on the wheel of time